Education, Confidence, and Charisma. So I have had so many things that multiple opportunities come up in one day. And so I'm going to bring up a few different new things that just happened I'm excited about. But most of all, today is my oldest son's birthday, and he exudes all of what I talk about. He performs rap. He's got music that goes out actually every single month. He's made a new album this last year, and he's been doing music for well over 10 years. And he has an amazing clothing line and all this artistic ability, but he's actually a natural introvert. And he taught me that the reason he wears loud items, <laughs> lots of jewelry, and, you know, unique clothing is because it gets people to approach him. Now that takes a lot of confidence to do that, to attract that extra layer of charisma energy. And then it sparks communication. He's been written up in many uh, magazines and online articles, and he makes good things happen because he is following his passion. So I want you to think about this, like when are you in a situation that you are doing things to attract attention to you in a positive way? Well, the other night I was out getting some happy hour, which you'll hear me talk about a lot because it's one of my favorite things to do, especially living in the city. And I was there with a wonderful friend and we're chatting away and then our bar area is not very big, but it's kind of got a big separate space in the middle, you know, for the waitresses to come up and get the drinks. And it faces the outside window. So not the best, you know, interaction type of bar, but it's a beautiful scenery. And I noticed when I was looking at my friend, I was looking down the rest of the side of the bar and I saw a gentleman who was way at the end, get up, move over and sit at the seat right next to my friend. And at first I thought it was because he wanted to see the basketball game on the TV screen, but I was kind of watching him going, nope, he's just looking out the window and he's by himself and I can tell he's trying to figure out a way to get into our conversation, but not be creepy. <laughs> and so finally I said something, commented about the, the cool glass he had for his drink, which was an attention getter. And so it sparked a conversation. He was somebody traveling from out of town and we had a great conversation and he'll be back in town visiting and he just loves Portland. Of course, what can you not love about Portland? It's awesome. But what was really fun is I could tell he was sitting in another spot with a bunch of men by himself thinking there's happy laughter energy going down there. So we were attracting the energy for him to want to move. And then he put himself in a spot where he could be approached. He definitely was a little bit nervous to find a way to interact with us, but he made himself accessible. He didn't get distracted by the TV screen. He was just sitting there without a phone in his hand. He was enjoying his drink and just being very present, available. The moment I said something, he's totally sparked up. And then he's like, well, hey, when I'm in town again, maybe we'll run into each other. He didn't quite have the confidence to ask for our number to meet up again. And so I said, hey, you know what? Here's my number. I'll let you know about fun things when you're in town next time. And then he was so excited. He was very much looking forward to it and excited to make a connection. And so often, it's not just about dating people. It's about making friendships. It's about building a sense of community. And so we had fun. He was happy. He got noticed. What a neat person. And then we left that place and my friend had to go to the grocery store. And I was like, oh, I'm always into walking. And so here I go, We're walking around the store and I look over and I see a gentleman with a basket. He's got two dozen red roses, a dessert inside, and he's got his hand on another dessert. And you could tell the poor brain was like, which do I pick? So you know me, I had to say something and I made a comment and he's like, yeah, I just found out it's my girlfriend's birthday. Her daughter texted me. I, mean, I just started dating her. So, I mean, I'm not completely you know, oblivious. He goes, but I don't know her well enough to know what she'd want. So then we helped out with suggesting which would be a better dessert. And then we ran into him again and his whole face lit up and he said, thank you so much. He goes, but I almost forgot the most important thing, a card. And honestly, I hadn't even thought about a card. So we forget sometimes that the romantic gestures that others make are really an extra step. It's those extra little pieces. The fact that he was struggling of which dessert, but he sure knew what card to get. And that sincerity is amazing. That is so important because the confidence to actually put yourself out there and 
say, happy birthday, I just started dating you and here's all these roses and here's all this stuff, you know, it's just, it's wonderful. Too many times we sit there and overthink it, like, well, I don't want to do too much. I don't want to be awkward. I don't know what I should do. I just met them. And I love that this guy was like all in. He got the card, he got massive roses, he got yummy dessert, and he thought about her. He thought about how much he wanted to acknowledge her. And that's what matters. So I'm challenging you to start looking around. Maybe somebody moves seats so they could talk to you. Maybe somebody needs a little advice on what to get for their sweetheart. Let's keep this conversation going. Like, follow, share. Tell me what you want me to talk about. I got lots to share and I'm really proud of everything that you are doing to step up to be the best you that you can be. I'll talk to you tomorrow.